there's a few stories going on tonight. You know, on NXT, we had the return of Hideo Itami, which was great. We had the debut of Bobby Roode, which you guys know I've been waiting for for a long time. But I gotta flip the script and say that the big story of tonight is that Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano might have just had match of the year. Yeah, I think that, that that's the story we're gonna go with. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spass Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with your NXT slash CWC review for August 3rd, 2016. Lots of fun stuff, lots of hype going into this week's uh, NXT, lots of hype going into this weekend, this week's CWC. Um, Hideo Itami, we knew, was coming back. Uh, Bobby Roode was going to be at NXT. We didn't know what his, uh, what his, um, what his role was going to be, what his function, what his participation in the show was going to be. We didn't, we knew he wasn't going to have a match because, you know, they would have advertised it as Bobby Roode's debut match. They just say he's going to be at NXT. And CWC on the other side, you got the very last four of the first, or four, tripping over my words already, it's going to be a long video, um, <laughs> the last four matches of the first round of the CWC. There we go. We did, in fact, get there in the end. Um, the other half of that story for NXT fans is that Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, who we're going to talk about when I talk about NXT, are going to face off against each other in the first round. Now, all of us, when we saw the Bracketology, thought, yeah, WWE could tell a really cool story here. You know, they're really dumb. Why would they give this away in the first round? I, uh, I officially don't care anymore <laughs> uh, about nitpicking like that. <laughs> when we get what we're going to talk about later on. But we started off the show. We started off the show with no talking. It's not Raw. It's not SmackDown. There's no talking. It is the return of Hideo Itami, which is fucking great. And he's going up against Sean Maluda, which if you've been following the CWC, he was eliminated in the first round, Samoan guy. But they say on commentary, and they said the same thing about Kota Ibushi. They're, they're, they're really vague about it. They say he's getting his shot here in NXT. It's like, okay, is he here tonight to be a jobber? Is he, you know, spoiler alert, Hideo Itami wins in his return match. Uh, or is or have they been signed to NXT contract? Because in the draft, we got a lot of cool people, and some not so cool when you talk about Eva Marie and Nia Jax, etc. Um, a lot of NXT's guts and glory went up to Raw and SmackDown. I mean, you still have Bayley, you still have Asuka, you still have... Uh, basically everybody that's escaped TNA. Um, but you need to build up some more names. You need to build up that roster again. So if they got Sean Maluda, who really, really impressed me in his first round match, but I think he... I forget who he faced, but he, he was one of those guys that you knew he was going over. Um, to further pump up the Cruiserweight Classic, they showed uh, Drew Gulak, Jack Saber, Zach Sabre Jr. Got there in the end. Um... And Anthony Nice in the crowd. You don't really know who they're cheering for because Gulak, Saber, and Nice have all advanced, and uh, I don't know what their interest would be in somebody who hasn't advanced or Hideo Itami, who's on a brand that right now they're not on. Um, you know, like I say, spoiler alert: <laughs> Hideo Itami wins in his debut, or sorry, in his re-debut because he's been gone for a year. We. We all remember before one of the takeovers, he was taken out by Kevin Owens to cover up for the fact that he's got a big shoulder injury. Um, they 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 barely brushed on the Kevin Owens thing because they can't really make a story out of it because Kevin Owens isn't in NXT anymore. So they got over that pretty quickly. They did, however, focus on the massive fucking gash on his shoulder from two shoulder surgeries, so that had to suck. Color a double type and a headlock by Atami and a kitchen sink, a snapmare and some kicks by Atami and a kick to the face. Atami eats turnbuckle and a boot by Malata. Uh, modified code breaker by Malata and some mounted punches. Stiff kicks in the back by Maluda and a body scissors. Stiff kicks in the front by Maluda and a clothesline by Atami. Dragon screw by Atami and a boot in the corner. Boot in the corner. Crazy strikes. Hesitation drop kick. Running knee. Hideo Atami gets the win. Now, the crowd was chanting something during this match. I couldn't make it out, but if they're still chanting for the GTA, Yes, just don't. Because that tells me you're not watching what this guy's doing in the ring. You want him to be our replacement CM Punk. And, you know, what did uh, Shawn Michaels say to Seth Rollins last year? You know, you want to be the second me. Why don't you go be the first you? Hideo Itami is making his name as the first Hideo Itami. You don't want him to be the Japanese CM Punk, do you? Really? No. 
and people are talking people are talking shit okay this is totally off topic people are talking shit about CM Punk you know the people all the people that say they don't care about CM Punk fuck him he abandoned us roddy 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 rah but yet they're following what he does more now than when he was in the fucking company talking about when he goes up against whatever jobber he's going up against in UFC if he loses is he going to be back for Wrestlemania 33 another spoiler alert no he's fucking not pulled a fucking tennis ball out of his fucking back after he left WWE I don't He'll be back when they put him in the Hall of Fame, for sure, but that ain't happened for a good 10 years or so. Ask somebody like fucking, uh, oh, what the hell is his name? Ask Savage, ask fucking Warrior, ask, um, what the fuck is his name? I'm going to remember it later on and it's going to piss me off. Um, I don't know. I'll remember his name later on. We get a shitty and trite segment in the back with the revival talking some shit TM61. It goes about as well as you can expect. Champa and Gargano come out to call out the revival and they say, oh, uh, we can't because we already gave TM61 a shot. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. You got three great teams here. You really do. The revival is good in the ring. I don't care about them. TM61 are good in the ring and they're a bit different, but I don't know anything about them. Ciampa and Gargano, who are pretty much the story of the night tonight, follow the bouncing ball, are fun, and they don't have a match tonight on NXT, which is great. Mojo Rawley, who's already on SmackDown, so why do I care, took on some jobber named Chris Atkins. Didn't last very long though. Collar and elbow type and a tackle by Mojo is about all you get because Samoa Joe comes out, takes out both men, shouts at Regal, who's not there on the microphone, says, you didn't consult me when you booked me with Nakamura at TakeOver, I won't consult you when I do shit like this. Talks about TakeOver, talks about Nakamura. Mojo jumps Joe. Yeah, say that three times fast. Um, they brawl on the ramp, but Mojo is clearly made an example of when he gets locked in the Kikita clutch. And that's the end of the segment. I don't know why. I don't know what Mojo has to gain for attacking the NXT champion. I don't know. Bailey talks about preparing for Asuka at TakeOver, which is great. You know, she's done all the physical prep she can. She's she's had matches with everybody else on the roster, which is like, what, three girls now? Um talks about how the preparation is now more mental than physical. Asuka comes in and says, you know what, if you think you're ready for TakeOver, why don't you watch my match that's coming up next? Asuka takes on Aaliyah, who is from Toronto, who, in the vein of Angelina Love, Gail Kim, Trish Stratus, etc., I'm hoping one day in the future will be my new hometown girl, because I don't have a hometown girl in WWE right now. I really don't. But, um... You know she's there to be an enhancement talent for Asuka, which is fine. Um, Bailey comes out for commentary to watch the match, but Asuka says, no, 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 jumps out of the ring, grabs a chair, puts it in the center of the rampway, points at the chair, points at Bailey. Bailey comes down the ramp and actually shows a bit of spunk because she takes the chair and she first sort of chucks the chair up the rampway. I like that. That's good. It's a little bit of attitude from Bailey. Not to say I wouldn't expect it, because you got to do that with every character eventually, but from Bailey, it's good. Anyways, you got Asuka versus Aaliyah, which goes about as well as you can expect. Crazy kicks by Asuka and some stomps. Body blows and a forearm shot by Aaliyah, which looks pretty damn good. Hip attack and rolling clotheslines by Asuka. Abdominal stretch in the ropes in Bailey's face at the, at the side of the ring there. Hip attack again by Asuka. Anyways, I don't know what that was. Uh, super kick by Asuka in a roundhouse, and uh, that sets up for the Asuka. Super kick by Asuka, she goes for the pin and sort of plays with her opponent in front of Bailey. Another roundhouse kick, Asuka Lock gets the win for Asuka. Bailey comes to Aaliyah's aid after the match, which is funny because after the match was over, Asuka really wasn't doing anything. So I think. Bailey is John Cena. She's the John Cena of NXT, but because she exists in the NXT realm and NXT can do no wrong, that's okay. She goes in to make the save from an attack that's not happening. I'm, I'm just putting that one out there. Uh, we get a really cryptic, sort of silhouette-y, we're not really going to tell you anything promo. Somebody named Ember Moon is coming at 8 2016, which is the takeover, which is wonderful. Bobby Roode makes his debut. 
It's only a promo. Like I say, it's not a match. But can we talk for a second about Bobby Roode's entrance music? The fucking intense choir singing glorious as he comes to the ring. And it's fucking great. As the commentators come down to the ring, they're trying to give some backstory for Bobby Roode for people that don't know. Hey, Bobby Roode knows some of the other competitors that we already have here in NXT, like Eric Young and Samoa Joe and Austin Aries. In other words, Bobby Roode came from TNA, <laughs> is what they're trying to say. Comes out, says a bunch of stuff, says the wait is over, Bobby Roode is finally here, Bobby Roode is NXT, talks about his experience at TakeOver Dallas, uh, says nobody revolutionizes NXT, or sorry, nobody revolutionizes, revolutionizes wrestling like NXT, talks about the We Are NXT chant that Triple H made uh, popular a little while ago says, you know what, it's not just us in the back, it's you guys here too. We are NXT, we are all NXT together. I'm here to take NXT to the next level. And then that's when he turns heel. He says, I'm here to take NXT to the next level, and that's why you need me. I'm going to be on your billboards, your ads, your buses, etc. Very soon the crowd will be filled with presidents and businessmen and not you schlups here in your loose t-shirts and your baggy pants, etc., etc., etc. I'm a superstar, and this is the new NXT. Now, I'm glad they resisted the urge to do what NXT typically does. When they debut somebody, they come out, they say a little bit of a spiel. Granted, a lot of them have been people that don't speak very good English, so it was better that they got interrupted. But they immediately get thrown into their next feud. Or their first feud, I should say. They didn't do that. Said his piece, and the freaking glorious thing pops up again. Now, he really, really hit the word glorious home. Now, if they're going to be calling him Glorious Bobby Roode, I might not be okay with that. He didn't say it factor one time, so I'm guessing that that's a gimmick that TNA somehow trademarked or whatever, but it is what it is. He is the it factor Bobby Roode. That's going to come out eventually. If he can't say it, the crowd will eventually. Now, our main event is TM61 versus The Revival, but as I say, this show was basically booked backwards because Maluda versus Atami could have been the main event tonight, and this could have been the first match, because I really, as good as these guys are, I don't care. I don't care because, you know, the, the revival comes along and we don't have a gimmick, we don't do flips, we just do fists, we're just good fighters. And then TM61 comes over from, I think, Australia, and there, you know, there's not much to us either. We're just really good wrestlers from Australia. I would rather see Gargano and Ciampa versus these guys for the belts, maybe at TakeOver. But this is just, it is what it is. I'm going to go through it, but it's not that great, so bear with me and we'll get through it. Dawson and Miller start a long chain wrestling sequence to start off the match. Double team and a double team Sinton fist drop by TM61. Armbar by Thorne, he works the wrist. Takedown by Dawson, uppercut by Dash, and a mud hole. Boot by Dawson. Ne uh, knee lift, knee lift. I can't read my writing. Knee lift by Miller. Drop kick, drop kicks for everybody by Thorne. Tandem backdrops by TM61 as we go to the little NXT WWE Network version of a commercial break. Dawson works the arm with a bridging su and uh, follows it up with a bridging suplex elbow, elbow drop to the arm by. Da they do a, a whole bit bit here where, that's just working the arm. So that's psychology. That's a story that I can get into. Works the arm, goes into the bridging suplex, elbow drops the arm and an arm bar. Thorin eats the turnbuckle, arm first, drop kick by Dawson, back to the arm bar once again. One punch knockdowns by Miller and some corner clotheslines, a spine buster by Miller, a DDT by Dawson after a bunch of chicanery outside the ring gets a quick and I will say very sloppy win for um, for the tag team champions, obviously. Uh, Revival get on the mic afterwards, they talk some shit. Gargano and Ciampa come out and mock them pretty damn because they start dropping names. So Gargano and Ciampa start dropping names back at them. It's not that gr Even Gargano and Ciampa, who I found funny in this segment, weren't that great. It ends in a brawl, the faces stand tall, and we know where this is going. Now, next week we've got the contract signing for Asuka versus Bailey, which is weird because last week William Regal said, I'm going to take your challenge to Asuka, we're going to talk about it, and uh, if it's okay with her, we're going to go forward. Now, you know the match is happening, but there was nothing this week where Regal came back and said, yeah, the answer is yes. Now, we're supposed to gather that the answer is yes by the fact they're having a contract signing next week, but it is what it is. Let's take a look at TakeOver. You guys know Raw and SmackDown have been, uh, you know, SummerSlam so far. This is TakeOver so far. Nakamura versus Joe for the title is going to be great. Asuka versus Bailey for the women's title is going to be great. Uh, are we potentially getting the Revival versus Gargano and Ciampa now? That would be great. 
who the fuck is Ember Moon? And what are guys like Rude and Aries doing on the show? These are the gaps we need to fill in in the next couple of weeks. But it's a good start. And I hate to sound condescending when I say that. I hate to sound like the guy that's sitting here judging the show. But at the end of the day, that's what we're here to do, is it not? Um... Takeover looks good so far. Takeover is only a two-hour show. It's not like it's SummerSlam where they have to fill four hours plus, you know, four-hour show plus the pre-show, maybe a post-show, whatever the case may be. NXT was good. I'm sorry, but NXT pales in comparison to uh, the CWC tonight and more specifically the main event. Rich Swan versus Jason Lee is the first matchup of the night. Rich Swan we know from NXT, which is good. You got Maluda from the CWC on NXT. Now you got Rich Swan and Gargano and Ciampa from NXT that are in the CWC. It's good. Anyways, we get a collar and elbow tie up and an arm drag and a snapmare by Lee. Drop kick by Swan and arm bar and forearms by Lee. Crazy strikes by Lee. I know people hate when I say that, but when, especially somebody proficient in the martial arts, just comes at you with a bunch of body blows and chops and kicks and whatever. I'm just going to brush it over and say crazy strikes because you don't want me to say, you know, punch, jab, forearm, jab, uppercut, low kick, high kick, whatever. And I'm not going to do that. It's I, I will admit from the bottom of my heart, it is hard enough to write notes on cruiserweight matches as it is. So for the people there that don't like me saying crazy strikes by such and such, it's not going away. Anyways, uh, crazy strikes by Lee and an insiguri in the corner, cravat by Lee, and a forearm cross, cross face blows and a back fist by Swan. Just like... Boxing, boxing the years, almost like I know it's funny to say in a cruiserweight scenario because he doesn't like cruiserweights, but it's almost like Vader used to do. Jumping Hurricane Rana by Swan. You've got Lee standing on the top turnbuckle, ready or on the second turnbuckle, ready to do a second turnbuckle something. When uh, from the ground, you got Swan that comes up and just hits this perfect jumping Hurricane Rana on him, which is just fucking great. Rolling Thunder fro style frog splash by Swan. Mike checking a low and a low super kick by Lee. Roundhouse kick by Swan and a standing 450 gets the win for Rich Swan. The standing 450, the hops that uh, Swan has is great. His um, one step explosion, I think is what they call it, to uh, get a springboard effect on his aerial maneuvers without actually being on the springboard is really, really impressive. Really good. Rich Swan dancing like he does on NXT. Oh, yes. Speaking of dancing, we got Noam Dar, who I've only heard of by name, versus Gurv Shira, who's also dancing because he's the other half of the Bollywood boys. We saw uh, other gimmick Shnevitz Shira a couple weeks ago. It's good. As I say, I haven't heard. This is the one reason I like the CWC is I'm seeing all these people that I've never heard of, and I'm never. You guys know this. I'm never going to go out of my way to check these guys out. I just don't have the time with the amount of you know, product that WWE gives us, and I'm kind of lazy, if you haven't figured that one out. But I have heard the name Noam Dar, I have heard it in multiple circles with people that have tried to tell me to check out British wrestling, and no, I don't just mean Mark Pearson. Anyways, collar double type and a chain wrestling sequence to follow, low drop kick by Dar, who works over the arm, back elbow by Sarah, who rides a headlock. Excuse me. No, uh, drop kick by Dar and a backbreaker by Sierra. They trade punches, forearm and an Irish whip by Sierra, trip in the ropes by Dar, corner back elbow and a drop kick. Corner uppercut, corner drop kick by Dar, spin kick, or sorry, super kick. No, it is. it does say spin kick. This is how bad my writing is. By Sierra and some stomps by Sierra. Step up in Seguri and a brain buster by Dar. Ankle lock, knee bar combination by Noam Dar gets him the win. Now, what I will say about, oh, it's Harvin Gurf, Sierra. There we go. They are the Bollywood boys. I find both of them to be tremendously entertaining. So they they hit really heavy on the fact that these guys are a tag team in a singles tournament. I hope this means that they're trying to hype them up because they're going to come up and be a tag team. We need more tag teams. There's a rumor that I'm going to talk about potentially tomorrow. Uh, I put it out there on Twitter. I have uh, some topical videos to do tomorrow. I haven't done topical videos up until this point, uh, really, unless there's something that really strikes my fancy. I really want to know what you guys think about me doing the topical videos. I do have one coming up tomorrow. Do you want me to do more topical videos, or would you like me to stick to, um, to reviews like this? Um, there are occasionally topics that I would like to talk about. Uh, I do like doing the reviews. I really want to know what you guys want to see because I'm not going to put out content that you guys don't want to watch. How's that? Um, anyways, but Bollywood boys, I hope they're coming to WWE and that may or may not factor into a topical video that I'm doing tomorrow. 
Fabian Eichner versus another guy that I've heard of a lot from uh, from the UK in uh, Jack. Okay, I'm going to say this because I've heard some people call him Gallagher and some people call him Gallagher. Uh, I'm going to call him Jack for the purposes of this match, but Fabian Eichner and Jack Gallagher, I'm going to be calling Fabian and Jack because fuck writing Gallagher and Eichner over and over and over again in my notes. Jack Gallagher uh, cuts the promo before the match or the, the video gimmick there before the match. He says, I'm a gentleman and da 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 and I'm going to be gentlemanly as long as you're gentlemanly and, and it is what it is. Motherfucker comes out with less of a tan than Aiden English looking like the third lost vaudeville. But that doesn't change the fact that he put on a good match. Armbar by Jack. Sorry guys, my freaking camera's beeping at me. Hold on one second. And we're back. I don't know what that was about. It was flashing the battery thing on me, but it's not only fully charged, but it's also plugged in. Sorry about that. Armbar by Jack. Fabian headsta Fabian headstands to get out of an armbar. Fabian much larger than Jack. Arm drag armbar combination by Fabian. Key lock by Jack. Fireman carry take over and an armbar by Fabian. Toe hold by Fabian and a trip and a toe hold by Jack. The first part of this match is that scenario that you guys know I love. It's that I don't know you, you don't know me feeling out process, but anything you can do, I can do better. Snapmare and a shoulder tackle by Fabian. Kitchen sink, heavy chops and a slingshot leg lariat by Fabian. Fabian rides a headlock and there's a pinning reversal sequence to follow. Tilt to world backbreaker by Fabian who follows it up with a triangle moonsault. If you saw the size of this guy, you know how impressive the triangle moonsault was. Drop kick by Jack and a guillotine choke to follow. Batista bomb by Fabian that looks like it could have driven him through the mat. Mounted punches. Fabian hits Fabian's frog splash misses and a dirty corner drop kick by by uh, Jack Gallagher gets the win for him. Um, big dude going up for the frog splash. It's one of those you gambled once with the triangle moonsault and you got it, uh, Fabian misses the frog splash, and as I say, the drop kick, the drop kick that uh, Jack Gallagher hit him with in the, in the corner to end this match basically turned him into a Pez dispenser. Jack Gallagher, goofy looking as fuck, as I say, will fit in great with the VOD villains, which isn't exactly inspiring. Impressed the hell out of me in this match. A uh, whole bunch of uh, there's a whole bunch of don't judge the book by its cover. I should throw into this match, but it was a good match. Fabian Eichner uh, f for all for all of his size and, and and power and all that sort of thing did have can't speak tonight at all. He did have the cruiserweight vibe to him, even though he was a big dude. Now, next match, main event match of the night. Gargano versus Ciampa. Now, my thought going into this is one of the bonuses of a tournament like this is we're not bogged down with a typical WWE-style story. How did we get to the match? We got to the match because the bracket put us there. Gargano and Ciampa, they played up heavily the fact that these guys are a tag team. They know each other. They even have an interview with each other before the match, and, you know, there's a little bit of tension, a little bit of rubbing each other the wrong way, and... Champa is just an angry, psychotic-looking dude. The entire match is full of dueling Johnny Wrestling psycho killer chants, which is great. Really, really great. You guys know, and why, why are we beeping? Why is that a thing? You guys know I don't watch the indies, and I, and I drive this point home all the time. I do recognize when I'm seeing something special. Didn't watch ECW in its heyday. When ECW guys came to the WWE and fought each other, I knew I was watching something special. Benoit Guerrero, just one example. I don't watch ROH, but when ROH guys came to WWE and I saw Daniel Bryan and CM Punk fight each other for the first time, I knew I was watching something special. At the two takeovers, when uh, when Bailey took on Sasha Banks, we knew we all knew we were watching something special. The first couple of seconds of this match, I knew I was watching something special. I'm going to go through the match, the description, the way, the rundown, the way I usually do things. But this, I promise you, will do no justice to this match. So, what I will say, for anybody that watches my videos, I know there's one or two people that have said they watch my videos because they don't always get to catch the show. I don't really know what I'm contributing to you that you wouldn't get by... Uh, watching the show quite honestly. I don't think my videos are that great If you are watching this video right now, and you didn't watch this match Turn my video off. I'll be I'll be here when you get back 
go on YouTube, go on a torrent site, go back on your network, wherever you need to go, go and watch this fucking match. Oh, yes. Now I'm going to talk about the actual match. Test of strength and uh, my writing is shitty. I swear to God. I'm so excited about this match that it enhances my inability to read my own shitty writing that I wrote less than 20 minutes ago. Test of strength and a knockdown by Gargano, arm drag by Gargano, and an arm bar and a back elbow by Ciampa. And this back elbow by Ciampa just makes you go, wow, you know, you did the typical, you knocked the spit right out of his mouth, but, you know, when a commentator says, oh my god, you know, somebody should check, somebody should check his mouth, see if he's not missing a couple teeth, this was pretty legit in this case. Uh, but it set the tone for the rest of the match, and, and uh, Ronaldo and Daniel Bryan, who were really great, tonight, other than when D D uh, Daniel Bryan repeatedly reminded us in the Eichner match, in the Eichner-Gallagher match, that uh, Bryan Kendrick was still his favorite to win. That is getting annoying. Uh, they trade chops, but they said, in this match, these guys are really good friends, they know each other really well, sometimes you fight your friends the hardest, and that that idea, even if it's not entirely true, you know, it, it, it added to it. Snapmare and a headlock by Ciampa, chops by Gargano, forearm strikes by Ciampa, and a pendulum kick by Gargano, slingshot DDT by Gargano, and some corner chops, super kick, running powerbomb, suicide dive, all by Gargano. He goes to do, okay, those of you that have watched my NXT reviews know that one of the things I love about, Gar about Gargano is that slingshot spear he does from the apron into the ring. He goes to do the slingshot spear and gets met by a dirty, disgusting kick in the face by Ciampa, which is great. These guys know each other. They know each other's signature moves, and they know what to expect. Great. High knee by Ciampa, insiguri by Gargano. They trade punches on the apron. I don't remember what they called it, but basically it's Sheamus' uh, white noise, uh, sort of tilted slam thing that he does. Hits the white noise on the apron. Looks disgusting. Gargano looks dead. Ciampa looks like he wants to kill him even more. Super kick by Gargano, clothesline by Ciampa, power bomb backstabber combination by Ciampa, chops to the he starts giving him knife edge chops to the to the chest, but then he changes his mind because he's been working on the guy's face the whole fucking match. He's giving him knife edge chops to the face, which leads into a crazy, crazy, crazy I I'm I, I don't care if I sound like I'm exaggerating it. The the snap effect of this last pinning reversal sequence before Gargano gets the eventual win, and there I buried the finale there, is great. And this was stiff, and it was dirty, and I'm surprised, not that I'm out for blood, but I'm surprised that one of these guys didn't b bust the other one open. Not saying that I wanted it, not saying that it would have added to the match, I'm just surprised with how this match went that they didn't, excuse me, bust each other open. Now, at the end, Big Bad Angry Ciampa goes to storm out of the ring, and uh, I figure they're going to do like a feel-good moment. Um, I know R ROH does their, their code of honor handshake deal. I thought, you know, at the end of the match, you know, he goes, to sh Gargano goes to shake his hand and Ciampa walks away. So I figure you're going to do the cliche, long pause, come back, shake his hand, raise his hand. But they don't do that because Gargano can't even stand. Ciampa standing there on the apron, you know, sort of staring off into space, the crowd's just chanting to him, like, they know they're part of a special moment. They're chanting, go back, go back, go back. And you figure he's going to pick him up, shake his hand, whatever, right? He doesn't. You know, Gargano's already cross-legged in the ring, all CM Punk style. Ciampa just sits down next to him and grabs him into this big, you know, you know they're really good friends, bear hug type thing. We know we just did something fucking special. You guys know, you guys have probably picked up on the fact that I'm, because I'm a big supporter of women's wrestling, most of the thumbnails for most of my videos are whatever women's match took place on that show. That's not an attempt to grab views, that's not because I'm some kind of perv or whatever. That I That is my quiet way of paying tribute to the women's division and hoping that the women's division continues to get better. That's why on a Raw, SmackDown, or NXT review, usually the thumbnail is the women's match. That's my reasoning for doing that. You will notice that the thumbnail for this video is just these two guys that can't even stand sitting cross-legged next to each other in the ring, just fucking in, in, in a pile of, of, like, man hug, whatever you want to call it. Both of them exhausted. Both of them know they put on a hell of a show. Ciampa, in his own right, has got to be kind of disappointed that he's not going ahead in the tournament, but he's, like... 
Gargano is really entertaining, and he's got a lot of he's got a lot of signature offense that I think is really great. Where Champa, he just comes to the ring, and no, you know that he's going to steamroll over somebody. And while that is amazing, and while I know that will grab him a spot on the roster eventually, I don't think it fits the mold of the Cruiserweight Classic. Now, it's funny for me to say that because one of the things I'm enjoying about this tournament is the whole diversity of styles bit. There's a lot of powerful guys in this tournament already, and you know this guy's got a spot in WWE already. He, he I'm pretty damn sure these guys are going for the tag team titles at TakeOver. Um, Gargano going forward, he's a little more entertaining. I think, if I'm not mistaken, we're, we're going to get to this in a second, I think Gargano's taking on TJ Perkins in the next round. I got the, I got the, the friggin' gimmick here we're going to talk about in a second. I can't say this enough. If you didn't see this match, go see this match. I will say again, I love that you guys come and watch my videos and want to know what I think of a show and whatever. What I have, what I have written on this page does not do justice to the match we saw. I saw it at the beginning, I said it at the beginning of the match, I mean it wholeheartedly. I don't throw this sentiment out there a lot because I don't think the whole, let's let's vote for our match of the year, <laughs> and I'm, if you don't pick the same match as me, we're going to argue and whatever. When you get to the end of 2016 and they're putting out nominations for match of the year, this will be on it. I don't know if it'll win. I know a lot of people think uh, Sami Zayn versus Nakamura. I know a lot of people think the women's triple threat at WrestleMania. I know a lot of people think the two uh, Sasha Banks Bailey matches. Um, I know there's a lot of things. I know a lot of people think Nakamura Balor, which is fine. Uh, in that conversation will be this match, and, and, and I'm dwelling on it. And I. <sighs> I wish I was still watching this match right now. As retarded as that sounds, because it, it was it was it was the special moment. Anyways, that was the CWC for this week. And as promised last week, let's have a little bit of not a preview, but we're gonna run down because we're we're gonna come quicker than you think to the uh, to the finale of this because I think it's ending in September. Um, but round two is going to give us Akira Tozawa versus Jack Gallagher, Tajiri versus Grand Metallic, Drew Gulak versus Zack Saber Jr., Ho Ho Lun versus Noam Dar, Brian Kendrick versus Tony Nese. I'm looking forward to a lot. Kota Abushi versus Cedric Alexander. Indeed, TJ Perkins versus Johnny Gargano. Lince Dorado versus Rich Swan. I. I was already on board with the Cruiserweight Classic. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be doing these reviews. But if I wasn't, t this week's show would have would have gotten me on board. I I can't. I literally between NXT and the and the Cruiserweight uh, Classic, I cannot say enough about Gargano and Ciampa. You guys know when Gargano and Ciampa debuted on NXT, I came to you guys like I always do. Guys, I don't watch the indies. Who are these guys? What do I need to know? Are these guys I need to look into? The response I got from you guys, as it always is, was fantastic. And for two guys that I don't know that well, I don't care how corny this sounds. I was privileged. I felt privileged to watch that match tonight. And it's one of those thank you to the WWE. Thank you to Triple H or whoever put the CWC together. Thank you for, to those two guys because in, in in all reality I think it was only about a 10 minute match but that that match could main event a pay-per-view and I'd be okay that match could main event a major pay-per-view and I would be okay go just go watch it go watch it. I don't know how many more times I can say it if you haven't seen the match go watch it just go go watch it go go quiet quiet go Anyways, I'm going to stop being a retard now. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, I'm tagging out. Bye, guys. Sunshine,